Let me ask you something. What do you think Counter-Strike is supposed to be as a game? Go ahead, be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get it, I understand. But you're wrong! Probably. I wouldn't know. Here's the deal. Besides it technically being a tactical first-person shooter, we all have our own understanding of what this game means to us. But what were the intentions of the developers? Surely this game was not by design supposed to be... Yeah, all of that. The co-creator of CS, Min Lee, has expressed how his inspiration came from his interest in the military, anti-terrorism, and guns. Makes a lot of sense. And I think this passion can be best seen in the CS beta versions. It has so much it experiments with, and so many ideas that didn't make it to the final product. Okay, here's what I'm getting at with all this. I feel as if there is something that has not been realized, either due to the direction of the project or the limitations of the engine at the time. So maybe we never saw the real CS until Min Lee decided to create the CS that was always meant to be. And how did that turn out? Yeah, tactical intervention, you know, the spiritual successor to CS. Let's explore what happened. So, what exactly did I just assault you with? Tactical Intervention was supposed to be a tactical FPS game with unique mechanics that runs on the Source engine. Levels or maps have scenario missions, each with their own gimmick. Hostage situation, bomb planting, driving, protecting the VIP, grapple hooks, environment interactions, and attack dogs. Players would have custom loadouts with unlockable weapons and three classes to choose from. Sounds ambitious, doesn't it? Well, sadly, it did not release in a finished state as you just saw. Tons of bugs, rough gameplay, and unfinished visuals. But it did make sure to have microtransactions in it, though. This game wasn't received well by the public, obviously. So why did it miss the mark so bad? There's not a whole lot of info on the background of development I could find. Luckily for you, I discovered the best source of information, and that is asking the man the myth the legend himself, Min Lee. Thankfully he agreed and was awesome to talk to. After the original CS and working on Day of Defeat Source, our young developer felt confident in his abilities, so he left Valve in 2006 to pursue his own project. He did want to expand his ideas, but not in CS, since things were already set in stone and he knows better than anyone the players aren't very accepting of change. Man, if that ain't the truth. Through a mutual friend, our young FPS game dev met with a business person in Korea. Let's call him Mr. X. Prior to meeting Min, Mr. X had been running a company called Fix Korea, whose primary focus was doing marketing to promote a variety of products for private companies and government. Fix Korea had no experience developing games, but Mr. X was very well connected and could introduce Min to many of the top game developers and publishers in Korea, like Nixon, Smilegate, and even top Chinese companies such as Tencent, Perfect World, and many others. Over the course of about three years and many promising meetings with all of these top game companies in Korea and China, Mr. X was unable to come to an agreement to work with any of them and decided it would be best to develop TI at his own company with Min. 
The dev team fluctuated in size from 5 to 10 people and was comprised of mostly juniors fresh out of game art school, leaving men to do most of the heavy lifting, such as character slash weapon modeling and animations, mission design, and programming many of the core features. Thankfully, there were a handful of developers such as Tony Sergi, Andrew Ritchie, Ben Kleber, and Huang Li that had enough game development experience to really push the project along. Min said that with such a big scope for the project, there should have been at least a team of 30 people including experienced developers. The lack of an adequate team meant the game had a ton of features but lacked polish in so many areas. No, oh, but that's not the end of it. During the middle of development, the game was to redesign itself to be a free-to-play shooter with microtransactions. This required a huge amount of work to rebalance the game and also to create content that was enticing to sell. On top of that, the few beta tests that were done were abnormally short, two weeks, and did not provide enough time to gather feedback for the dev team, making it a nightmare to fix its issues. After around seven years of work, marketing campaigns started going around to drum up hype. Regardless if what was shown seemed unfinished, people were on board hoping the end product would be much better. Then comes March 28th, 2013 release date. And as we all know, it got slammed by everyone. Some laughed at it and the hype fizzled out. Following the negative reception, their publisher OG Planet's servers were shut down a few months later due to lack of activity justifying the upkeep. It's over. Although, the game was picked up by German publisher RNTS Games and put on Steam. This came with even more marketing. Presentations with free t-shirts and babes on the stage, a very nauseating cinematic trailer, interviews and action figures, I guess? This was a sinking ship, however, as in 2017, the servers were shut down again, this time for good. Then, at some point, it was delisted from Steam even. It's so over. But alas, a team of XFix Games employees banded together to try and, no pun intended, fix the game. Started an Indiegogo campaign to re-release as Tactical Intervention Reloaded. It didn't even come close to reaching its goal. Okay, this time, it's officially over. You know what, despite all of this, I think Tactical Intervention is a good idea. For the sake of research, I did have to play it, and besides the obvious glaring issues, I like what it's trying to do. The driving mechanic can be fun, and in general, the multitude of objectives and certain mechanics that interact within the world add to the challenge, instead of relying mostly on gunplay to win. A great idea for a game just sadly ended up underfunded and underdeveloped. Adding salt to the wound, monetization made it pay to win, according to reviews. That really shouldn't have been there. After this whole fiasco, the publishers washed their hands of TI, Fix Korea closed down at some point for unrelated reasons, and Min Lee moved on to greener pastures. With all of that in mind, why didn't our main man just abandon the project and cancel it? With everything seemingly not going well from the beginning, why go through with it to the end? Eh, well, he was simply hoping for a positive outcome despite it all. And maybe in an alternate universe, tactical intervention could have had a chance if it was in a better state. Massive thanks to Min Lee for contributing all of the history part. If it wasn't for him sharing some lore and helping me out in general, I probably wouldn't have even made this video because otherwise there isn't much to say. Wow, game le bad, end of story. Although TI is in the past and everyone has moved on, here's something that's in the present, and that is bureaucracy. Because I have to go to my local town hall to file some documents and I seriously despise doing this. It takes so long and it's so inconvenient.